another edition of AEW Unrestricted. Tony Schiavone with former first-round draft pick from the Washington Huskies and Seattle Sonics, Detlef Shrimp. Great, great. <laughs> R.I.P. <laughs> <laughs> Detlef Shrimp's not dead, but the Sonics are. I know. In my heart. Uh, that's a Detlef Shrimp uh, jersey it she's is. got on there. It is. And I wanted to write I, it off on my taxes, so I wore wow. it here. How about that? <laughs> it, it's, it's Aubrey Edwards, also known as Miss Bellevue. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Bougie as fuck. <laughs> and, of course, we, uh, we are very happy to have you with us. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. You know who else I'm happy to have here? I'm, I'm sure you are. I'm happy to have two of the original members of the Dark Order. Stu Grayson. What's up? And Evil Uno. Hi. Yeah, buddy. Hello. Formerly known as the Super Smash Brothers. Correct. Yeah, we'll get into that a little bit, though. Great. All right, before we start, I want to read through the giant list of accolades, because you guys have been together for quite a while. Yep. So yes. About 14, 15. 14, 15, 15 yeah. Oh, my really? God. Wow. Yeah. Jeez, that's yeah. like three times, four times longer than my whole career in wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right, uh, two-time Alpha One Wrestling Tag Team Champions, one-time Chikara I, I can't even pronounce that. Uh, Campeones de Parejas. There you go. Wow. One times Combat Revolution Tag Team Champions. Two time Royal Canadian Tag Team Champions. One time International Wrestling Syndicate Tag Team Champions. <gasps> one time Pro Wrestling Guerrilla Tag Team Champions. 2012 Pro Wrestling Guerrilla Dynamite. Derivative. Yeah, derivative. DDT. Yeah, there you yeah. go. That's yeah. Uh, 2012 SoCal Uncensored Match of the Year versus the Young Bucks and Future Shock. And then 2012 SoCal Uncensored Tag Team of the Year. This is where I breathe. <gasps> there was so many. You're about midway. You're about midway. Yeah, about midway Same through more. all yeah. the things. With you got to You got to hold the. Oh yeah, yeah. So you're midway. <laughs> I'm, 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 you're talking I'm not a professional. I'm no, not a professional. It's fine. It's fine. Cool. Great. Yeah. So you guys, uh, you've been together a long time. Yep. And then when did you come to AEW? Remind me again. Uh, you were here at the our beginning. first show yeah, was uh, Fight for the Fall. That's right. Yeah. yeah you guys came we, in at the end of the Best Friends match. No. Uh, the we had a promo after the end of. Uh, the best friends match at Fighter oh, Fest, and we were also right. uh, we appeared at Double or Nothing. Yeah, as well. our very first appearance was Double or Nothing. The that's very first, first one, match. Yeah. Uh, that's right. That's that's the one. The Dark Order, uh, through the course of being with uh, AEW, has changed a great deal, as we yes. know. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys were not able to travel during the pandemic, mm -hmm. correct? Which was tough. Brody Lee comes in, yeah, and uh, the Dark Order takes on a whole new, different uh, look. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about it. that had to be tough, not being able to come. To get here and wrestle during the pandemic. Yeah, the the I don't know what the hardest part was. If it was like not being able to to see what our creation was about, you know, what direction it was about to take, right? Or just knowing that there was nothing we could do because we were literally just stuck at home, mm -hmm. right? But it was tough because for about what was it like three months? Uh, yeah, almost four. Yeah, almost, almost four. four. We were stuck at we home. Were, yeah. We were just stuck home, and we would watch the product and. You'd be like, oh, I guess today we're doing this on TV, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Right. Right. Here right. goes Dark Order. Right. <laughs> it was right. especially unreal because uh, uh, you're at home and, and you also just had no timeline, right? Because we really didn't know what was going to happen that year. Right. We had no idea. To us, honestly, we were we were at home and we thought, well, they're going to cut international people because this is it for the year. I don't think international people will be coming back. Thank God it didn't happen. Found a way. Here I am. We found a way. Yeah. Here I am. We, mm -hmm. Because really, we were just waiting on... Uh, the Canadian government to let us know what was going to happen with traveling and the government had not been speaking about it at all for months wow. like we had no idea Trudeau. so it was like oh every Monday you know stay tuned we'll talk about something and then eight Mondays passed by and we're like did you did you guys forget about the COVID like, uh, <laughs> like we want fuck? to leave <laughs> <laughs> we want to get back to work you know yeah. I, yeah. I think we've recovered okay though so yeah, we're fine I, I think so now, leading up to that there was some great uh, build up for the Dark Order and, oh, yeah. and the uh, the Exalted One is coming. Mm -hmm. Some great videos that were done. You had to be happy with the direction of that because we were, it, it was yeah. a big part of the show. It we really were was. very pumped for yeah. it. So. We, were, we were very excited, especially because Burley was a personal friend to us. So yeah. we like we were very excited for his arrival and just what was going to be coming up. And, and the buildup was great. Uh, the interactions we had online with Matt Hardy with the teases were great. Right. Uh, I got a lot of good promo time. We had a lot of great video work from the AEW team. Um, I think that's really when things started to turn and we were where you we were getting because there was a point where we were not looked at very favorably. Uh, but at that point, it was starting to the, the opinion was starting to turn. But unfortunately, we also then disappeared for four months. So. It was yeah, right. kind of interesting the way that it like you guys had introduced the exalted one, but then the timeline sort of broke and mm -hmm. then the exalted one appears when you're not there. It's just mm -hmm. kind of the funny, funny way the timing went. Yeah, yeah, it was just the worst possible timing. Yeah. Like we got to. Uh, have the exalted one appear for that one time and then as we were launching this phase of dark order 
us Dark Order were now out of the Dark Order. So. <laughs> yeah, the, the original, what is it? Someone said the middle manager of oh, Dark Order. Me. Yeah, hello. <laughs> Hi. I do all the hard work. Interesting you say you guys kn- knew Brody. I, I, of course, I didn't know that you knew Brody, but mm-hmm. you guys obviously had worked with him before. So it was easy being able to work with him. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, we had been friends for, uh, I mean, I think we met him over 12 years ago. Right. Yeah. 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 Was our, I think... I think I met him on my second time ever in the United States for wrestling. Uh-huh. Yeah. We were on a show with uh, on uh, for Chikara, mm-hmm. right. and I met Brody for the first time. And right away, he was just awesome. Yeah, yeah. you know, like we hit it off very quickly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's one of the one of the greats in our business mm-hmm. uh, throughout the years. Not only as a wrestler, but as a person. Yeah, a and, true sweetheart. Honestly. Yeah, and and I know his death. Uh, Really floored us all, but I know especially guys that work closely with him, of like course, you guys. Yeah, yeah, mostly because also like with the Exalted One, uh-huh. the whole storyline. We were about to do the best work of our life, right? With a guy we've considered our best friend for so long. Sure, yeah. and come in with like, the chemistry already. Yeah, yeah like, instant. When when Brody was coming over, at first we weren't even sure to propose to him to be the Exalted One because we thought, well, he's been in the team the whole time. Mm-hmm. Now he's probably going to want to have like a single run. And he was like, no, 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 I'm in, guys. Let's fucking do this. Like, <laughs> right. oh, all right, all right. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. The thing I really loved about Brody is how he consistently, and it kind of sucked because you guys weren't there, but when you had the ability to come to America, this was the case. But like he wanted everyone who was in the Dark Order there every week. Yes. Like yeah. he pushed for Alex and Silver mm-hmm. and Anna. Like everyone who was in the Dark Order needed to be there to really help build the like dynamic of what the Dark Order was and you guys as a group and funny enough I mean you guys started as like a cult and heels but now you're a cult and baby faces because you just want to have more friends Mm -hmm. so how doesn't who who doesn't I mean everyone loves friends right that's why we're all here today I have Um, enough enough. yeah it's fine you don't need any more I mean yeah okay I I understand Tony you're a popular man (laughs) popular man Tony does not want to join the Dark Order that's where we're gonna spoilers now (laughs) (laughs) you have how many kids yeah Five. Too many. <laughs> oh, oh wow. So so how did the how did the Dark Order idea come about? Uh honestly, uh we were doing something called the SSB back on the independence because we were trying to uh so I was a video game guy for about a decade, uh back when I was player Uno. And we kinda wanted to distance ourselves from the name and also from being video game guys at the time because uh, it kind of pigeonholed us into being a specific role mm-hmm. and we couldn't really get much growth, much story stuff when you were just two little guys playing video games right yeah uh and so we, we wanted to switch around and so we made drastic changes to become heels uh, and be more like focused on like uh, originally it was it was not even cult focused when we were doing uh, uh on the independence but uh, it, it kind of grew into that because we started running a school and our students would become the creepers that that were That's the right. ones at aw it was a and, way for us to have them travel with us yeah build bridges yeah. and then take bumps every yeah. now and then so that yeah. we don't take bumps <laughs> there you go investment smart, uh, smart. It's how you pitch smart. It, right? uh, but honestly it was, like, it was a way to make uh it made it seem like we had a cult following and so that when we eventually did come to aw uh we brought that cult following with us uh and then um we had a discussion fairly early on when television was starting that we wanted to f- go full tilt on the cult stuff we want mm-hmm. to go more in a scientology aspect and that's when the video work started coming in and that's when uh uh we were given more time to try and approach people on the shows and we mm-hmm. had approached uh, christopher daniels early on and then marco uh, stunt as well and jungle boy um and uh, uh from there i mean it just kind of organically grew into different versions obviously brody came in right. as the exalted one that wasn't like uh, always originally the plan but right. uh i mean it it definitely uh helped us an immense amount uh brody came in and did the best work of his life right. and 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 honestly we're forever thankful and in his debt for right. for what he did for us yeah. and now organically we're where we are now we just yeah. want friends it's 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 pretty yeah. sweet it, it's it is sweet and i want to touch on something uh, you said so long that was your your kind of your calling card the exalted one is arriving mm-hmm. the exalted one is arriving and my friends would ask me, who's the exalted one? I said, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's so, I mean, when I'm, you started that, did you not know who it was going to be? Or uh, I'll be honest. We we started in, uh, so we had our December beating at the very, very end of the year, which was uh, universally hated. 
Uh, oh, is that it, the one with the punching yep. where it didn't even That's hit? the one. The, yeah. whole, the whole thing that, was that creeper does Were those not, your students? Is out of the group. No, 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 no. those were just random extra we had on the show. Yeah. And Definitely not the students of student no, Uno. No, they, no, they would know how to punch. <laughs> they, we, uh, we would have posted their face like, hey, you guys remember that guy who sucks? It's this guy. Like, but no, He's been but kicked no. out of the school yeah. forever. No, we had a that day. Blacklist it was him. There were so many bodies, and every time we have extras, so we would take the time to teach him, like, the throne he would sit on and, like, if you can't do this, don't do it. Like you can just stand there or, or choke someone with your foot. You don't have to throw punches. You don't have to. If there's something you can't do, don't. And then on like this whole segment was a catastrophe from mm -hmm. beginning to end. Yeah. So it was yeah. So because of that segment, we had a discussion with with Tony about uh, uh, integrating a, a leader character, and so it kind of gave higher us a direction. Power. But to be uh, to be entirely honest, we genuinely didn't know who it yeah, was right. for several months. Sure. I think, uh, I mean, I, I saw, we we personally didn't know who it was until like three weeks before. It okay, happened. All right. um, because nothing was like we were told this is what we're going for, but at any moment it could change. Yeah. It's wrestling, right? Like yeah. anything can happen. Parts so we had a good change. idea for a while, and three weeks. Before it happened, like, oh, yeah. yes, it's confirmed. There, there were some names floated around, and sure. obviously Brody was within the, But we right. still Matt Hardy didn't was Matt actually Hardy floated, was floated around. Yeah. Right. Uh, I mean, this is going around, but Dr. Luther was fl was floated around originally. Yeah. Uh, um, there were other people that weren't directly told to us, but I heard that were floated around as, uh, as ideas. But uh, it landed on Mr. Burley, and honestly, that was that was the best thing that could have happened for us. That's what we wanted, so. Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> yeah, it works out. You got that built-in chemistry. Uh, two other guys in the Dark Order I want to touch on real quick is uh, John Silver and Alex Reynolds, yeah. who originally were booked as local dudes. Yeah. And then we started flying them everywhere as local dudes, which was kind of crazy. But they started they they started the process of joining the Dark Order and then eventually becoming the recruitment specialists. And now they're they're kind of on their own uh, skyway to success. Uh, what was the decision to sort of bring them into the Dark Order, and how did you guys mesh as a group that originally started as two tag teams that's now one faction? Well, the idea was that when we started recruiting, we knew we wouldn't be able to recruit, like like when we said uh, we uh, uh, approach Marco and Jungle Boy, we knew we, we, couldn't, we couldn't get them right now because they were starting their own gimmick, their own storyline. Right. So we knew we would have to approach people that are on the show but are ultimately like useless at the moment so when we would they would bring them over john right. and alex and they would make them job and job and they had no purpose so we right. th we said hey we know they can go yeah they we can. wrestled them once year years ago well right. you're all sort of from the same area too yeah, we, yeah you no, run yeah. the same yeah. circles you you know their guys we've are wrestled on the same promotions and so we exactly. know of them and we 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 had befriended previously and yeah. uh on the first few shows though they were lo losing within seconds to moxley or, or losing within seconds to lax and so to us as a story beat, if we were going to make winners out of losers, your first few shows, you've already told people these people are, these are the are losers. losers. And yeah. we know they're very talented. So they are. when we did our Scientology pitch, they're the first people I suggested. I, I said we could we can make these guys at least at least last more than a minute on these shows. We could like, give them somewhat of a purpose in the promotion. Yeah. You know? Right. <laughs> and, and honestly, they're just – they're very entertaining on their own. And oh, 100%. Yeah. Once you give them the, the platform, here they are today. Because most of the time in wrestling, all you need is that one shot to make yourself mm -hmm. interesting or, you know, just... You say that one line, you that do that boom. one thing, and then just That's immediately it. people connect with it. And, like, and that you're, was you're just, our way of saying, hey, you let's yeah. give it a try with these guys because we knew, like, at, at the very least, we knew they could wrestle. You know what I mean? So it worked out really well. We're talking with the Dark Order, Evil Uno, Stu Grayson, and this is AEW Unrestricted. We have more to talk with them about, uh, actually, about uh, how the Dark Order became the Dark Order that we see today. This is AEW Unrestricted, your co-host, the lovely Tony Schiavone, and the mm, solid six, Aubrey Edwards. We're here today with... Stu and Uno, fantastic guys. As we touched on in our first segment, you guys were previously the Super Smash Brothers. And I'm curious, did you ever get a cease and desist from Nintendo? So everyone thinks we did, and that's why we dropped the name. But Nintendo didn't care. Okay. As yeah. long as we're not selling anything Nintendo-focused, they wouldn't really matter. And to be honest, we weren't making enough money f for them to be bothered. No one makes money <laughs> yeah. on the Indies, no. And, but there's also, like, in the last few years, we dropped to just SSB, mm -hmm. just in case someone could be like, oh, maybe Implied. it means something else. Yes. Yes. And then, <laughs> super sexy brothers. Or exactly. Whatever. That's, that's, you know? that's, that's exactly what it meant to. the that's whole really time anyway. That's yeah. what it was. That's mm -hmm. what it meant the Very whole attractive. time. All right. 
Um, so you actually debuted as the Super Smash Brothers in 2009 in ROH. Uh, no, before I, that. Well, before I mean, we, that. We, we, we had done Smash Brothers stuff well before that. Right, right, uh, right. But yes, in Ring of Honor, that was our first match. Uh, and you guys actually had a rivalry with the Young Bucks at the time. Uh, yes. Uh, so in 20... Early 2010? 2010 to 2012 in PWG, we had a rivalry uh, with the Young Bucks. And then that kind of like gravitated to other promotions as well. Oh, right. Yeah, I remember you guys had that awesome ladder match with them. Correct. And uh, I think it was uh, Kyle O'Reilly and Adam Cole. That's right. Yeah, yeah. they were uh, uh, at, uh, Future Shock future at the time. Shock. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. Fun, uh, fun fact. Uh, my husband was in a tag team for a bit and they had a big old tables match. So they just stole a bunch of spots from that match. Everyone does. Yeah. Everyone right. does. Everyone's like, oh, it was so innovative. You put him in the ladder upside down. And it's yeah. like, ha, ha, ha. They haven't seen it. This is yeah. great. Uh, <laughs> every time, every, bro, ever since we started doing PW, UG, we would literally go on shows and we would have to tell people don't do that spot They're like oh but invented it no you stole it from the last pwg video and i'm in that spot <laughs> oh, oh yeah, sorry Stu. yeah i'm yeah. sure you are Fuck off. yeah <laughs> so many times yeah i um I, I was very unfamiliar with your guys work but i mean it's it's very apparent that you guys do some incredible things and and you. you know as and i've said this so many times you can do all the great videos you want mm -hmm. and I want to get into that here in a minute, but when you, when the bell rings and you can perform, that's when you really, really get over, as you guys know. And, mm -hmm. uh, it was the stuff that you've been doing lately. Obviously, has been very entertaining, but the matches have been very good as well. And I wanted to talk about the change of the Dark Order because I guess we can go back to BTE when that kind of all evolved. Yes. Right? Yeah, that was kind of a that was the turning point uh, on where we we became de facto good guys. Right. It right. just it just we became too likable, right. honestly, is what it be. <laughs> what it got. Yeah. I think it was interesting because had we not been in a pandemic, I think you guys would have had the turn much earlier. Purely because yeah, you were so because if we would have had a crowd for sure. If we if, had yeah, if we had a crowd, yeah. there would have been no other choice but to yeah. put us on TV a whole lot yeah. more and make us turn baby face. Because at that point, were we even the bad guys? Like, no, you I had a chili I mean? like, sponsorship and everything. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and honestly, we only really started doing BT because uh, it was kind of a fight or flight situation. Not the team, uh, um, which are from Canada, or whatever. Um, <laughs> but, uh, shout out! Uh, um, like, but uh, <laughs> we we weren't certain what our positions were anymore because we had been gone for four months, and uh, and Alex and John also didn't know where their positions were because they 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 were unsure if. Uh, management people uh, uh, externally like them, right? So we ten actually, had come in and five yeah, had come exactly. in, and you're worried about your spot exactly. and everything. And, and so, like, we all knew we had personalities, but we didn't have a way to to. We like, didn't have a platform to show. Uh, our yeah, personalities. We, exactly. we could do promos and we could do the sinister videos, but you can't really show who you are as a person as a person that way. Mm -hmm. And so we thought BT would be a good aspect because it's more of a comedic show, so we can kind of be more lighthearted. We didn't anticipate that we'd be like. We yeah, were like yeah. gearing it up, up so 11, much, but homoerotic, yeah, insanity. Um, like, like every time we're done with a video, we're like, did we go too far again? Yes, yeah. I don't uh, know, but did we just far. say we wanted to see his dick while he pees? Mm. Like, did we? Yeah, I we did. May have said that. Yes, <laughs> you may have said yes. it. I think twice yeah. in a row, like two Myth. episodes. Yes. In. Yes. We've all seen each other's asshole. Like, what the fuck? Like, you have one yeah. guy who's addicted to coke, and you're just like, yeah, okay. So yeah, so we we have kind of we may have pushed it a little too far, but I think that's also what people are interested in which is is, yeah. is very odd but I, I'm, 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 having, I'm having the time of my life to be honest it's, right. it's so much yeah. fun to have a group of people that not only are you working together as a faction but you are genuinely friends with I, and, I love that we have the different locations at Daly's Place where like promos will be filled mm -hmm. and stuff and there's like each room has a different like there's the the Rim Rock bar there's right. the this room and now there's like the Dark Order bar yeah. like yes. that's just historic the house. Yes. yeah that's just where you guys hang out that's <laughs> where you have slumber parties and build yeah. tents and where you break tables and yep. Oh uh, my table God. was expensive. Oh, there was there was <laughs> yeah. a lot of lot of I heard, fun heat I heard for the, the table. Oh, I God. didn't even know about this cuz I was in the room during it. And so I found out a week later on BTE when they, they talked about the, the table costing and $100. The, yeah. And then I was like, I sent a message to Matt. He's like, oh, yeah, you. the last week was a little rough on you guys. And I was like, none oh, of this oh. came to me. I had no idea about it. Everyone's talking about the heat behind your back. Mm, yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, you guys were too over. So that's the advantage. That's true. Right? That's right. <laughs> Couldn't the get advantage. rid of us yet. <laughs> the trademark came, uh, became uh, kind of uh, throwing paper in your face. It was. Oh, yes. oh okay. yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, I actually suggested that to Brody because I, I, I was like, oh, if I do a Wilhelm-style scream, I can 
get a good comedic reaction out of it. And then it just became the bit mm -hmm. was just eventually we kind of had to tone it down because I had I was I was falling for papers over tables and chairs and stuff. <laughs> right, and right. At some point I was like, on television, I'm going to get beaten by anything if, right. if that's the case. You're going to take a bump and die. Also, yeah. We also didn't want to kill the joke either. So. Yeah. So right. then we, we, we wanted to keep it for the yeah. right moment. So then we moved it over to John and then that became its own thing as well. Sure. And then, then now that now that heat is on to five. Yeah. Will it be later? I don't know. Right. The heat on Anna yeah. has always been on me for some reason. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that always kind of worked. I like that dynamic that you two have. <laughs> the Valentine's Day episode was probably my favorite where you, it's like, to Stu, open it up. Fuck, Fuck. you. Yeah. <laughs> or Fuck off yeah. or whatever yeah. it said. And I'm just like, this is perfect. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. It's, it's Absolutely great wonderful. Stuff. I was... Uh, I was on my way to do a to do one of the episodes Dynamite, and and Brody grabbed me. He said, "Come here, I need you for just a second. Oh, and he yes. pulled me. Oh, in, that's remember, right. Pulled me in the bar. So, what the fuck are we doing? He said, "Just, just somebody's going to hit you in the face with paper. I want you to say what the fuck." I said, "Okay," <laughs> and we did. And it's and I watched it back, and I went, "Damn." Or something that was like thrown together yeah. on the fly. Oh yeah, that well, really so we do. Every <laughs> single BT has uh, about a minute planning yeah. and is yeah. one take, and that's probably why they get so raunchy. Is right. that? <laughs> They they get tilted the extreme instantly. It's yeah. same as you know, right? Because we had no idea what we were doing until you were asked. So right. So it's uh, wow. <laughs> we just create magic. That's all it is. Oh yeah. So so BTE obviously created by Young Bucks and Kenny, like mm -hmm. the whole elite thing. And we touched on how you guys had had matches with them. At yes. what point did the Young Bucks approach you to join All Elite Wrestling? Uh, so we were uh, we were talking with them before AEW was even announced. So, so we were we were on the 2018. The, you were one of the early. Yeah. So yeah, we were like on the summer. Uh, it was like late November. Late November. Um, so they they had told us they had something uh, in the works. They couldn't tell us really the details because of, of whatever legal so on contracts but they said, everywhere. And they said if if anything's offered your way, do know we're about to offer you something. And and and. Mysteriously enough, Ring of Honor had offered us something literally two days after that discussion. Wow, that discussion. the timing! And so I, I, we passed it on, and in November we started having the because we're Canadians, the paperwork and the the visa application took so long. Right. Uh, but uh, we were amongst the first few people uh, as far as uh, wrestling talent to be signed. Yeah. So your charter members. Yep. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's right. Our charter members. We're talking to Evil Uno and Stu Grayson about the uh, the change in the Dark Order. Now, Anna Jay became a member of the Dark Order. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd heard so many stories about when she walked out with a mask on, on yes. her face, <laughs> and everybody says, <laughs> okay, she's gorgeous. Why does she have a mask on? That's literally on? the yeah. statement that was said in the women's locker room. It's like, right. they put the prettiest girl in the mask. Yeah. Like, well, what the hell are we doing? The they very, just lost money. <laughs> the very first idea was actually to cover her whole face to piss people off. No. Oh, yeah. supposed to be Yeah, because originally our whole process was that Brody was going to say she was too pretty for to current day's wrestling. Right, I'd heard that. Wrestling it's not is about, about work pretty. rate and not what... What, how you what, typically that's been like women's wrestling? Heel. Yeah, we want. Oh yes. We want yes. the people to like cover her yeah. whole face for right. a while yeah. until we finally allow but her. She's... But then they're like, "Oh, let's make that pretty face mask," and we're like, "No, let's fucking no, no." That's <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> and honestly, <laughs> she's just she's just too attractive. Yeah, so, she's yeah. gorgeous. She's, she's, she's wonderfully she's, gorgeous. Right. Yeah, and she's uh, she's had an injury. She's going to be out for a while. Yes. I, yeah. Obviously, you've got been supportive of her, and mm -hmm. you can still use her in your. Uh, she can still shove you with one arm. Yes, I'm sure she can. And if she doesn't, someone else will for her. I'm sure. I'm sure. Pretty Lee. Will show up and hurt me really badly. Yeah, yeah. be like and, I'm Anna J. Push. Yeah. <laughs> but she's meshed quite well with you guys. I mean, we were talking about the Valentine's Day episode, mm -hmm. and she's uh, she's been showing her personality on. She this. has, yeah. and I'll see. It's been a good vehicle for. It was at first it was a vehicle for ourselves and and John and Alex to be honest, but it's been a great vehicle for five and for ten and for Anna to yeah. show personality. Uh, Colt as well, who yes, uh, kind of. Uh, uh, stumbled his way into the group and kind of just stayed, but now has been a fixture of the group as well. Right. What is he, number eight? He yeah. is, so eight. theoretically, so yes, he is number eight. Okay. Uh, we've yet to say it on Dynamite, though, but yes, he is number, I gave him the number a while ago. It's on his gear and such. So so you're number one, two. Correct. Alex are three and four, mm -hmm. silver. Five is five. Five is five. Six is uh, X Pac, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's X Pac. We, have, we have reserved that number for yeah. that one. Just in case. Okay. Just Seven is Dustin, just in case he does take you up on the offer. Right. 
Uh, and then- <laughs> eight and nine were uh, on a dynamite once. Uh, nine was also in a six way with us as well. Right. We cannot disclose who nine is. No. Uh, yeah, and eight, we actually got kicked out. Of the- Brody powerbombed him, and he is no longer in this. Right, uh, which is why Colt took that number because it was Colt available. Yeah, 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 it was retired, 10. so it's now given. And then Anna's ninety nine. Yeah. yeah so so we- she got like the very end of the spectrum, also because Wayne Gretzky. But yeah. right, yeah. the greatest. And then ten, obviously, is is ten. Right. So you currently have eleven through ninety eight available. I mean, oh, we, we have been giving like, it out to the people who uh, send the emails to us, but okay. uh, a lot of numbers uh, there there are some reserved numbers that okay. we are we are looking. You know, there are there is Ty Conti. Uh, you know, oh that's right, uh, Mr. Right. Adam Page. Yeah, maybe who Cowboys. I was thinking if uh, if Xbox does not want to join us, uh, Xbox, open invite. Um, but uh, maybe, maybe uh, Mr. Adam Page could be six. You know, the Perhaps. six shooter. You know, it's oh, a gun. Oh, that's gun. smart. It's that a gun. Smart. Six shooter. A but this this cowboys. has got so much potential. Thank oh. you. It really does. This, this might right. be an exclusive break. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Don't know. Maybe. In okay. hindsight, they'll go back a couple weeks yeah. and go, that's where it was. That's, oh, where, it that's where Xbox came in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That huge run he had with us. <laughs> it was planned the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> then you got 10. Mm-hmm. And uh, I give 10 a hard time about his mask. Because I kept looking at the mask. I said, what the hell is that? Oh, that's a one and a zero on your face. I I had to really stare at it like (laughs) it looked like that you made this mask when you were drunk or something. Right. I was like, did they run out of fabric? Like, what happened? Yes. He he ran out of fabric between his two ears. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's what he did. Yeah. But we still love number 10. But I love that because now you have Brody Lee Jr., who Mm -hmm. is negative one. Correct. Basically looks like a tiny 10. Yep. And And likely someday will just be one. Right. And and ultimately... (laughs) And ultimately, he's sort of become the new de facto leader of the Dark Order. Uh, it's because we just can't say no to we, him, to be really honest. No he, one just, can. No he one is, can. He's the most terrifying member of our unit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my. <laughs> exactly. People don't realize it, but every time he's at Dynamite, we I, I have welts all over my body because yes. he beats me constantly. Yes, I know. And yeah. uh, one thing that I really hate is that people think we're like, Using him or abusing? Oh, the oh no, he's having a time of his life. Have a choice. Absolutely not. <laughs> I mean, his, his his whole life is about waiting to finally show up to dynamite. I know yeah. that. Beat the living piss out of us. Right. Yeah. Book the whole show. Right. And then <laughs> go home. The right. That's what he does. There, there was actually like maybe peeling behind the curtain a little too much. So we always have a bunch of darks after dynamite. And I remember like somebody coming back and saying, "Okay, we got to move all the Dark Order matches up because Brody Lee Jr. is tired and he wants to go home." And we're like, "He's literally booking <laughs> he's got, the he's show." He's school in the morning, yeah. right? And then everyone's just like, "Well, we can't say no." Like yeah. he's 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 Brody Lee. Like he's he runs wonderful. The, he's, Honestly, he's the coolest kid. I, I like. accept the beatings because he's that cool of a kid. Yeah. Right. right. I wish I was that cool when I was nine. Yeah. Like, and, <laughs> and genuinely, for a, a, a nine-year-old. He is smarter than, mo- than most he gets, wrestlers in he my gets area. Wrestling. <laughs> He's like, very he well. He, when he does, I'm going to cut a promo tonight. So I'm going to say that so they'll have a reaction. Yeah. I'll just feed off of it, and I'm like, what, what, what? You're nine yeah. years old. And he's, like, what? Uh, he's, <laughs> the, there are he's people incredible. in wrestling who don't cut as good it's a promos true. as yes. this. Yeah. Like, this is insane. Uh, the other one, too, is like in his 45-minute Iron Man match with Marco yes. uh, once at an after party. He, like, he, he did the whole, like, grab him. By the arms rather than like pull his hair up. And I was like, oh, brother's a worker. Oh, yeah, yeah he, knows. He, knows, <laughs> he knows. he knows what he's doing. When he, when he wants to protect you, you will. When he doesn't, you're screwed. Yes. Right. The, he will make sure that the pad is pulled off the couch before he gives you the kiss. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, he's a good kid. It's a great story. It really is. Uh, really props to you guys for taking care of him because I know it's, it was tough for all of us. But yes. I mean, you guys in the Dark Order really took him under your wing and made him a part of it. And, and it was special. It was special for everybody. Yeah. It's it really special is. to us, too. It's, yeah. it's um I'm more than happy to do it. Yeah, it's, it's, we love uh, it. Yeah, it's uh, it's a big part of my life as well. Right. So. Yeah, it's a big part of all our lives when mm-hmm. he's there. Uh, just to show you what type of kid he is, I saw him in the back one day. He calls me Shivani. <laughs> I was like Shivani. What are you gonna say tonight, Shivani? So I went like this. I went eh, like that. And he, and when I went like that, he did a leg dive. Yeah, yeah he went right for it. Yeah. He's, he's, a matter, he's, uh, he's done amateur wrestling. He's, he's very good. He's a savage. He's yeah, a savage. I, I, and I was doing like, stop it. Yeah. I, I like, don't yeah. work. I don't know what the hell I'm the doing fir- here. The first time uh, after the uh, uh, Mr. Brody Lee uh, memorial show that I had seen him was, was like two weeks later. And I see him across the room at the hotel. I'm like, hey, how's it going? And he slaps me the hardest I've ever been slapped in the face. <laughs> and he's like, hi. And he walks away. Yeah. <laughs> Just asserting his dominance. Yeah, I was like, sure. oh, Janice. Just the next know. two days are going to be brutal, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, before we go to fan questions, that that show, yes, was if any show was ever booked correctly, it that was, was that the one. one. That, that was the one. one. Yes, that was that. That's a, that's the one show that is mm. we're going to remember for a long, long time for yeah. many reasons. I, it's 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 ingrained in my memory, but right. I also refuse to go and watch it. 
which yeah. I, yeah, I can't go back. I, emotionally, I can't. Uh, I can't I, revisit okay. it. We yeah. went from that night like crying and laughing and uh-huh. crying and laughing nonstop. Mm-hmm. It was uh, emotionally the hardest of our life. Yeah, but the most. Welcome. At yeah. the same time, yeah. it's, it was very too. It was necessary for everyone. Not, yeah. not only Dark Order, but like the whole roster. I think needed right. yeah. that day. Yeah, I agree. It was. It was. It was a moment we'll never forget. Okay, fan questions are coming up for Dark Order. There were there were more than I think any other group. So All I'm right, excited about this. This is AEW Unrestricted. Tony Schiavone and Aubrey Edwards here so, with Evil Uno and Stu Grayson of the Dark Order. We're at fan questions, which I had to turn off my notifications on Twitter because there were just so many. I'm quite popular. Yep. Yes. Oh, quite popular. Mm. So sorry for not having you guys on sooner. First off, apologies to everybody because this yeah. is clearly a mistake on our part. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah. definitely. It wasn't. We'll find someone else to blame. It'll be fine. Yes. All right. First Stacey. question. <laughs> Stacy. No blame. Always Stacy. Sorry, Stacy. Uh, first question from AEW Liquid on Twitter. If you mm-hmm. could have actors or artists in the Dark Order, who would it be and what would be their numbers? I want Fred Durst in. You, oh, dude. You want yeah. Fred Durst? Oh, hell yeah. You think he changed the red hat to a purple one? I think he would oh, if you pay him yeah, enough I money. So. I think so, too. I think so. Yeah, enough money would make it. What do you yeah, want yeah. for numbers, though? I don't know what I would for give number? him. number? Oh. How many fucks he says in that, uh, that 47. song? 47. 40, there you go. 47? Yeah, 40, 47. Number 47. <laughs> Fred Durst. You heard it here, folks. Fred right. Durst. Uh, I'd go uh, Jackie Chan, a uh, personal hero of mine. Oh, wow. yeah. that'd be a good one. That would be great. Yeah, yeah, be I, I think he'd fit great. Yeah. Uh, as for number, eh, let's go simple and say 11. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, someone like like Bill Gates or Elon Musk just for the money. <laughs> Can we... That's smart. That's smart. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you just got a fun like, dark order. Like, that should have been our first pick. Like, <laughs> BTE will be filming a private jet. Right. On the moon space or something like <laughs> You guys suddenly have your own cryptocurrency. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uno coins coming. Dark order is a national. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a great idea. Wow. <laughs> Tremendous. Uh, let's see. Let's go to uh, Tony Commentates on Twitter. With you? Steal, steal that damn name. Okay. <laughs> What's the best advice Mr. Brody Lee ever gave you guys? Uh, for me, it might be the same thing for you. It wasn't about wrestling itself, it was about when you're not wrestling, he was telling me, uh, if you're stressed at home, uh, if you're stressed at work, like you care about your wrestling, getting over, having good matches and all this, it's all right. You have to perform and you have to be, um, you have to be hungry and want and more. Mm-hmm. Once you get home, you're home, forget it. Yeah. Live your life, yeah. be with your family, right. yeah. be a husband, a father, right. whatever. Is Once you're home, just be home. Otherwise, yeah. it's just going to eat you alive. It's been the same uh, same advice for me, honestly. Yeah. Um, essentially, he was such a a, a a great family person that right. once you're home, don't let don't let this anxiety affect your your real life. Yeah. But you know, enjoy the time you have with your family. Another question on Twitter, Stu. Did you why did you drop the Vega mask? It was badass. Um, at so at first, I wanted to keep using it, but then it also uh, limit. My amount, like my facial expression, and True. like in the entrance when we do the just the pose, I wanted my face to be seen on TV more and more. And I'm very, I have a lot of expression. Like I'm the yeah. pissed very, off. Very I'm expressive. always angry, right? Mm-hmm. So I wanted that to be shown. And since we did not have that many matches on TV, but a lot of entrances, like I felt like if I want to put my face out there. I need to drop the mask. There you it, go. it doesn't mean it won't be back, mm-hmm. but as of now, I have not find something TV worthy in my opinion. Okay, so. that's Very a good, good answer. That is a great good answer. answer. Yeah. Yeah. Got to make that money. Yep. Got to make that money. Jam Carlo on Twitter, Ever Uno. I love your middle management style role in the Dark Order. There you Thank go. you. My Thank friends you. and I always crack up seeing you holding everything together. When will we get more Evil Uno on the mic in the ring? We miss it so much. I, I, I. I don't know when I can answer that question. I uh, do not make decisions, but uh, I really talk appreciate to Brody the Lee comment. Jr. because he clearly he does. Might, yeah. oh, he well, books the yeah. show. Well, uh, if little bro- little Brody, I hope you're watching this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, next dynamite, throw me in a match. Also, 12 minute promo. Thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate it. Golden segment. Open the show. I don't want to be the nine o'clock crossover. Thank you. <laughs> that's, that's how you make the money. Oh, okay. That nine o'clock crossover. Uh, masks three then. Oh, Mask 7. Ah, I get yes. it. That's funny. Use numbers. Haha. <laughs> On Twitter. Uh, Stu, what's the secret behind your incredible athleticism? What inspires you to put out so much great work? Uh, very young, I realized that the thing I was doing best is fight. So when I was about six years old, I started uh, martial arts. 
Okay. I've been fighting for about 26 years now. Ooh. So my whole body, my whole training, my whole life is based around the fact that my body needs to be it's the fastest, the strongest, right. the best it can be. So martial art, I've got so I'm a black belt in karate, mm -hmm. I'm a black belt in taekwondo, I'm a black belt in kickboxing. I've done trampoline, free run, gymnastic, and now I've got 15 years of wrestling. Mm. So I built my body in order for it to be the best it can be. To be and beat up by anything. Yeah. So, <laughs> Including so trampolines. If, so I can survive mm -hmm. if Anna pushes me really hard. But <laughs> That's why the bumps are always so impressive. They're so impressive, I get right? It. Huh. I survive. But uh, and my, uh, my training, my workouts are very, very uh, intense, and I all my workouts are made for so that it's practical strength, mm -hmm. so I can do anything. So that's right. why if I need to lift a uh, new wrestler who's seven feet tall, mm -hmm. 450 pounds in a great match on Dynamite for 30 <laughs> minutes, I will easily lift that man. Hello, Paul. You, Paul. <laughs> Is that what? Oh, I was talking about Paul, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Well, I will do it, and yeah. I will break him upon my knee, because, wow. Paul, you're a wuss. Ooh. Ooh, fighting words. No, man, because I'm, right. I'm going to eat this. I'm the one that's going to get beat up. It won't even be <laughs> yeah, you go through him first so I can like Who see how, the pen? how bad you are, like <laughs> how, how angry you are, and then I'll and then I'll wrestle you, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. So there. He's a badass. Don't fuck with him. Yeah. We've all known that, and thank you very much for your question. Uh, Mr. Uno, this is from Claire on Twitter. Mr. Yes. Uno, how many hours of opera classes did it take to perfect that scream when you got hit by the papers on BTE? Uh, I've never had opera class, mm -hmm. uh, 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 nor have I ever really sung other than karaoke. I love karaoke, so if really? you count those hours, maybe, I don't know, six months worth of What karaoke. is your go-to karaoke song? Uh, I'm a Backstreet Boys guy, mostly. Oh, nice. Yeah, Ooh, yeah. that a Kid Crowd Rock favorite. song also. Uh, that Kid Rock song, uh, yeah. um, um, uh, Lonely uh, Road of Faith. Yeah. Uh, um, I'll, I'll I'll do anything. I'll attempt to rap. I'm not very good at it. I just I'm uh, I'm the guy that if you throw a song on and people don't want to, no sing one knows to it, who put it on. I don't even know the song and I'll sing it. Give them the mic. Uh, I Give just the mic. Uh, karaoke's fun. I haven't done it in quite some time. Do you have a choice karaoke songs too? Uh, very much Backstreet Boys as well. Uh, if there's some Katy Perry, Tenacious oh, D, good. Lonely Island. That's gonna be my firework. jam. Firework, yeah. yeah. Oh, firework. Oh, oh. Yeah. choice. What choice. a song, right? Come on. What a song. For sure, yeah. Tony, those, do you have do you have a choice karaoke song? I don't know uh, if this is ever something we've covered on the podcast. Well, yes. I, I, I there's a lot of uh, Frank Sinatra songs I like. Ooh, uh, yeah. classic. Yeah. classic. The way you look tonight, my way. Really old man boring shit. Oh, it's, I, well, <laughs> but that's, you know, but I, no I can one relate. else can do that. <laughs> one of my constant is uh, my prayer by the Platters as well. Oh, oh that's yeah. good. About the that. piano man. Mine's uh, mine's no, we can by to Cardi B. So, oh, yeah. I don't know who that is. I don't know. Nope, nope, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> not at all. So that you. All right, Kyle L on Twitter. Uh, Stu, how does your knee survive the nightfall? It looks so painful every time you do it. As someone who's torn their ACL multiple times, it makes me worry every time you do it. It's funny because even like the every wrestler in A Dub is asking me the same thing. How is your knee? not broken by right, now right and it's it's simple physique like once i hit can can you see my knee from there well, watch the video version of the podcast so, if you okay. want to see the demonstration okay. the knee has to be a perfect 90 degree if the kneecap is right over your heel the power behind the leg is exponentially stronger right and as i bring the dude down i make sure like the position if i'm slightly if i'm sideways a little bit i'm fucked yeah, yeah. but if it's perfect the amount of pressure the knee can take is astronomical wow. and through like the last thing 20 years of martial art and all this stuff uh like when we used to to train we would get our like leg hit with kendo stick or uh by, hit, by little, little not brody. my little brody no 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 <laughs> like the, the training for martial arts to, to toughen up like your legs is pretty crazy yeah so years and years of that i suppose but yeah it's yeah. really the 90 degree is the most important thing Today you got a physics yep. lesson as well as uh, yeah, getting to good. listen to. That's great stuff, man. That's, Luna, yeah, that's, that's kind of a first on our show, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> actual <laughs> physics demonstration, right? Physics is the move, yeah. I like it. You got your x vector, you got your z vector. Like I'm trying to figure you out gotta, crossing the dot product. Honestly, wrestling is a lot about science. Like it is. There's a it's huge force. amount of it. It's yeah. all physics. It's forces, I mean, momentum. And, and, exactly. I mean, let's be honest. Everything is about science. If we're gonna, if we're gonna yes. get to that. I mean, if debate, we're getting deep okay, and philosophical, smart ass, thank you for that. Okay. <laughs> the Canadians, their school system's better than ours. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, that's that's great stuff, guys. Uh, the total lackage on Twitter. Mm. Great name. So I'm sure you are a lackey, <laughs> but that does not 
have anything to do with this. Thank you for your question. Yeah. Uno and Stu have a very unique contrast in style as a tag team that blends together nicely. Not many teams in the past have a similar makeup. Were there any teams, even short-lived, that you looked up to as a blueprint for your success? As a blueprint? Uh, I, I never really had a blueprint on who we, we – uh, I'll be honest. Uh, uh, we kind of just feed off each other because I know yeah. his strengths. He knows mine. Right. Um, there was uh, Kevin Steen and El Generico on the yes. independents who were, were very crucial to our success. And so uh, they also had a similar dynamic. And so our dynamic – kind of became similar just by being friends one of you wears um, a mask oh my god that it is works. The, what what yeah, uh, true story uh they believe yes. that uh, el generico is uh my uh, brother brother and that kevin owens is, is my brother that uh, we're also brothers but, but we're also brothers you're but, also but they're Canadian. not brothers yeah. but kevin and el generico are not brothers which makes no sense because we can't anyways so other than that also uh, <laughs> uh i love the british bulldogs i love hard foundation yeah. I mean, we uh, also our, grew our up. foundation is very similar to what we grew up with some of the best tag team wrestling, like like the the, the years of the Chris, Edge and Christian, right. mm -hmm. and the Dudley Boys and the Hardys and all. Like, so we got to watch a lot of this. But in terms of like what we became, I think a thing that was really important for us is that we are two completely di like different individual. And either if we're a tag team or in singles. We are our own people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But together, we're, we're like, we there's complete not, each other yeah, regardless. There's not a lot of team that has that. So I think that's one of the big advantages for us. So Nice. Uh, Ricky Stark Style Consultant on Twitter. Ooh. That's totally a word wow. because nobody Tell me where he gets his Ricky shirts. <laughs> uh, how does wrestling in Montreal, where French uh, is predominantly spoken, differ from wrestling in the rest of North America, where English is the norm, or is there even a difference? Uh, it's it's mostly English speakers. Uh, yeah. English is is universal through wrestling, but there is a subsection of Quebec, which is where Montreal is, uh, the province that uh, Montreal is, that speaks solely French. Uh, and so, of course, a lot of the wrestling stuff will be French words. Um, we're both French, so originally French, so the, but to us, it doesn't make much of a difference. In terms of, like, like wrestling moves, name, and stuff like that, it's going to be in English. Yeah. Because there's, like, clothesline in French would be la corde à linge. And, and it doesn't a, sound menacing yeah. at all. No, not it's at all. really, like, it's literally the description of what a clothesline is. Right. Uh, a power bomb is le pouvoir de la bombe which is just it sounds insane in right. french right. someone could like i would be planning a match with someone and he would be calling me those names and be like i don't know what you're saying man like, I don't, <laughs> it I'm does not french. translate what well. is going on you want the shorter version so if you're calling yes, it in the exactly, ring right. you it have would less to talk about right. like someone yeah. calls me a spot i'd be like why are we talking Plus, about this like what is it, even if you're in a french-speaking province it's it's still you're still watching english wrestling so you you learned it from tv most exactly yeah, yeah. I know working with the Joshis, they tend to use the same like English words yep. for a lot of the mm -hmm. moves as well. So it, it is universal, yeah. right? JR uh, teach wrestling in English to a lot of people. Oh, yeah. When you think about it. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was the people thought slobber knocker was a real word growing yes. up. Right. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Spoilers. It's not. Yeah. Ghost X Empire. That's Ghost X Empire on Twitter for Uno. Mm -hmm. How many masks do you have and what is your favorite one? Uh, I. Throughout my career, I've had probably like 40 plus masks. Wow. Uh, currently, this is my favorite one. Uh, I only wear my leather bound masks for television. And then I have uh, a few masks that are made from a Japanese individual who also makes uh, Excalibur's masks called uh, Soi Takeda. And I wear those on Twitch. Currently, I believe I still have 13 of my masks. Oh, oh wow. That's cool. a lot. Frank Tiano on Twitter asks, for both of you, uh, do you have a place that you want to go to once AEW is up and running after the pandemic ends? In terms of vacation or wrestling? Wrestling. Uh, wrestling? Like, where would we be touring? A venue, uh, yeah, a place uh, to wrestle. One of the places I was really excited to go, which was planned for us, was New Orleans. Yes. Because I've never been there, and right. I wanted to party there. Right. That's like, that's just for oh, the... Oh, that's dangerous for our uh, company you know, to go Yeah, to. you know, for with the boys we have here, like, uh -huh. in New Orleans... Like, I'm sure at least two or three person would be dead. Arrested? <laughs> it's true. Uh, it's true. Dead prison or arrested? Would be My money is on five. Uh, yeah, yeah, for oh, sure. Five. Yeah. Ten would be in prison for sure. No, ten would get out of prison because he'd offer someone drugs. Oh, yeah. yeah. Smuggle in his butt. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> If uh, if I were Seems legit to me, <laughs> this is totally uh, legit. I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna cut like you off. This at the is button. all a fucking work we're talking about right now. <laughs> <laughs> fucking it's work. not real. The difference between a shoot and a work. This is a work. It is not real. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm on the on the butt stuff. I'll cut you there. Um, uh, two venues I would love to is I'd love to do uh, Centre Belle in Montreal just uh, because oh, yeah. it'd be. 
We're not from Montreal, but it would essentially be our hometown base as far as a large we show. We basically grew and up then, uh, there. I'd love to aim high and uh, let's do Tokyo Dome. Oh. Uh, Tokyo Dome, Madison Square Garden, obviously. Yeah, like sure. the, yeah. the legendary arenas, for sure. Right. Yeah. right. Each Absolutely. of them. Absolutely. Okay, we have. let's uh, do uh, one more question because you mentioned Twitch, I believe. Correct. Yes. I did. Fl- uh, Flower of Manchester on Twitter. Mm. Will Stu ever join Uno for Twitch Among Us shenanigans? Uh, I don't know if mm. Stu knows what, how to play Among Us. His laptop can barely do, like, the question, video stuff. The question is, do I know what video games are at this point? It's been so long, I actually don't know what Among Us is. How uh, do you not know? If you follow any of the people on Twitter, you know what Among Us is. He doesn't really I, like social media either. I, that's true. That's true. I'm if not it's a not big lifting. fan of the internet, yeah. just in general. Yeah. If, if without it's wrestling, not, I would probably not use electricity. If it's not <laughs> working out or if it's not chocolate molten lava cakes, mm, mm. Stu that's, doesn't care about it. I don't really care, no. no. But uh, I'd love to have him around. We used to play uh, uh, cooperative games and, and, uh, and stuff back in the day. I so. would like to do something on Twitch. I'm trying to maybe have him set up every thing for me so I don't have to think about it. There you go. Maybe do something workout wrestling related on Twitch. That'd be fun. I, w- I don't know if people would be interested. I think I would like to do that. Something yeah. around, along the line. That'd be super fun. Yep. Well, we are we are out of time, but uh, Stu, you have become my hero because you're a badass. Everybody's <laughs> ass. You'll give a shit about the social media. Hell yeah. That's right. Yeah, man. You're the man. Fuck. There you go. All right. Thank you both for being yeah, here. Well, thank, thank you. you. It, was, it was fun. We'll have to uh, obviously edit out some of what uh, Aubrey says, but that's it. <laughs> we always do. That is a, we yeah, always a common do. occurrence. How about we just like put a figurehead in front of her entirely? Right? <laughs> yeah. Just, just, just like Excalibur can voice over. He's used to it. He yeah. can. Yeah. He gets paid by the word. And, Does he? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, How do I yeah. speak so much? Yeah. How do I do that? Okay. How do I get that? Okay. You can follow... Uh, them on Instagram at evil.uno and mm-hmm. Stu underscore, underscore Grayson. Correct. Yep. And on Twitter at evil uno and Stu underscore dose. Subscribe Correct. to yes, AEW Unrestricted for free wherever you get your podcast. New episode Thursday morning. And check us out on YouTube where you can see uh, the great physics demonstration that Stu provided today. It's, it's tremendous. Tremendous. Absolutely. And also my, my sick-ass jersey. And What's my gorgeous up? eyes. And your gorgeous eyes. There's a lot of cool things you should do yes, when you watch yes. the YouTube oh, episode. Yeah. Uploaded uh, generally on Mondays. Right. Uh, if, if TNT remembers. <laughs> we'll have to cut that part out. See? Uh, <laughs> just go to YouTube. <laughs> this and part st- is a work <laughs> again. <laughs> <laughs> you have to uh, go to YouTube and search AEW Unrestricted and watch all of the latest and prior episodes. Thanks for being with us. Thanks, uh, Evil Uno. Thanks, Stu. And thank you for being with us on AEW. Unrestricted. Thanks.